I can only speculate where a fascination of nature comes from, but there are studies over and over again that show that we humans do love to look at and be in nature. One very interesting study that was done by Japanese scientists who were analyzing uh, the fractal patterns of a Japanese garden that was designed in 14th century Kyoto uh, found that the uh, relationship of the rocks in this, this rock garden fit with what we call a fractal pattern. Now that's a, a complex patterns in nature um, that are basically the same geometry at every scale. So think of veins on a leaf, leaves on a twig, twigs on a branch, branches on a tree. Think of the branching of your cardiovascular system and your blood vessels. Snowflakes. Snowflakes are a perfect example of fractal patterns. And we don't know why. I, I don't know why um, people enjoy looking at these patterns, but, but we do. There is something about them that's calming. And, and not only looking at fractal patterns, but hearing fractal patterns. Same thing with colors. We, we like blues and greens. Um, there, most of that is probably learned. Um, we, are, we learn to associate calming moods with blues and greens and exciting uh, moods with yellows and, and reds. Um, but there is a theory in evolutionary biology which suggests that perhaps some of that is in our genes and came out of evolutionary biology. And that is that um, the, the genes to recognize blues and greens came online first, and they're the oldest genes in the eye. And the genes for the pigments that recognize red um, and yellow came online later at exactly the same time that primates began eating fruit. And so the theory, and again, it's a theory that ha would have to be proven, is that perhaps there was some evolutionary advantage for the primates that were able to recognize those red, luscious, exciting fruits on the background of the calming greens. You know, the brain has a place uh, that recognizes preferred scenes and beautiful views. And universally across cultures and ages, uh, people prefer to look at views of nature. Um, we don't know why this is, but Irving Biederman, who has done brain imaging on this part of the brain, is called the parahippocampal cortex. Uh, and uh, he's shown that that part of the brain is rich in endorphin receptors, uh, those, those feel-good molecules that make you feel happy. So his theory, and it's a theory that still has to be proven, is that when you look at a beautiful view, the reason we all, uh, whether whatever age or from whatever country or culture we come from, the reason we all prefer to look at a beautiful view is that we give ourselves a, a shot of endorphins when we do so. And he, he likes to say, why else would we pay extra for a, a room with a view? Being aware in the moment of your environment, of the beauty of your environment, it sounds almost trite, but um, stopping to, you know, stop and smell the roses. Um, wherever you are, it what, it what that does is it allows your brain for even just a few seconds, for a few minutes, for however long you're doing it, to come down off that high stimulated stress response level and bring you down to a little bit of a lower stress level. Uh, when you're walking down a city street, if you're able to disconnect from all those stressful stimuli and just focus on the moment, um, that actually reduces your stress response. And we know that, that it's a good thing to lower your stress response as frequently as possible because we know that what's harmful for uh, the body is not so much the individual stressor or the individual event to which you are exposed, it's the total load of stress that you carry with you every day. And it's that load, that total cumulative amount of stress that does the harm to the immune system and the body.